So today I am back on my old university stomping ground. I'm here at the University of Mary Washington, waiting for a friend to get done with a project downtown. And I was reading Dune Messiah and I finished it. And I've had several people tell me that you don't really get the story of Dune until you finish Dune Messiah. And I have to say, I completely agree. It's an oversimplification to say, but I think it's still accurate that Dune Messiah feels like the falling action of Dune. It's an entire novel that at its core is essentially just wrapping up the consequences of the book that came before it. And because of that, Dune Messiah has reframed how I view Dune in a slightly more positive way, but I'm struggling with how Dune Messiah stands up on its own. Because there's a very limited amount of action, and this is more just watching everything fall apart. This is largely the political battle that Paul faces now that he has to think about the heir to the empire he has created and the consequences of all the wars he has started. And billions have died. You really can't paint it any other way. Paul is the worst thing to happen to this universe. And that's kind of going to get to my first point. There is no good in Dune. I do not see any side that is in the right here. From the institutions Paul overthrew to the establishment of what he has made, nothing is just or free. It's all just factions moving against each other with their own convoluted agendas. And Dune, in hindsight, feels almost as if it's full of fools. We know that in the real world, very often, people who should not be in power are placed in those positions, and the results are bad or even horrific, and in the worst cases, genocidal. And that's where Paul falls into, yet he isn't necessarily a fool. At least not exactly in the same sense as the other leaders that came before him, because Paul is someone who is forced into the position he is placed into by quote-unquote destiny he exploits. The character and story of Paul is not happy, it is not joyous, it is not to be celebrated, it is compounded layers of immensely tragic events with no clear right side, and the feeling is this inexorable draw to dread. And that dread is compounded so powerfully by Frank Herbert mercilessly coming at what is childhood in childlike characters and violating their childhood, not in a way that is lazy, you see so many authors do before, but by building it into the lore and basically while they're still in the womb at times, forcing them to grow up. And it's so unhuman, it's so unnatural. And that's when you realize that while the narration, the actual story is not treating these things as bad as they are, you, the reader, if you're paying attention, will start seeing that similar lens afflicted over all that is painted before Paul. And to me, that's where the duality of the tragedy yet dislike for Paul comes in because he is the cornerstone, the crux, the initiator for all of this. And yet, when you're getting to know him, you know it's not his intent, but he's becoming numb. He's becoming just so overwhelmed. He cannot process the numbers, the true horror that is the result of the Muad'Dib, but it is him. And it's this juxtaposition of the human, the man versus the icon and the myth. It's beautiful. And this book almost makes me hate my job because I feel like the actual ending of Dune Messiah is the perfect conclusion for the story of Dune. Because I was left with this deep, deep sadness and pity for someone who I also view as the core and spark for immeasurable tragedy, genocide, on a scale inconceivable to the human mind. But because you understand the man, you hate and pity him. I do not like Paul, but I feel bad for Paul and maybe that's the worst outcome for him. And maybe my favorite choice about all of this coming together is that Paul is hyper aware of all of this through the visions he has. He feels the inexorable pumping of blood through this universe's heart, the just continual flood of death that will come as a result. And in the sea of opportunity his visions provide him, there is no escape. Talk about a brutal life to live, and yet yeah, you can't really blame him for becoming numb in some ways because it's just his reality now. Now, if I did have to have one criticism of this story, 
it, it is inevitable with the story that is told, but it's super Paul-centric to the point where other characters all just feel like they are revolving around him with him being Emperor Paul. Perhaps that is completely appropriate, but from a reader enjoyment perspective, I had a couple, okay, I've, there's a lot of Paul moments. Frank Herbert clearly loves this character and concept, but he didn't back away as an author from putting him down the path that is most likely. While Paul is this religious figure at this point, he is someone who has power beyond comprehension. He is also someone who struggles with the game, the game of being in power. And that's the most enjoyable part of this book. If you are not someone who can enjoy an entire story with very minimal action, you probably won't like Dune Messiah as much as I did here. And if you're someone who doesn't like kind of representative or metaphorical events being extremely cornerstone to the overall development of the plot, and you don't like reading into things and speculating a whole lot, which Dune Messiah really wants you to do, you also could have larger problems here as well. Now I'm gonna get into the actual end here and that's going to result in some spoilers, but I really don't think this is the kind of book where your enjoyment is ruined by knowing how it ends. So three, two, one, go. Paul goes into exile. He is walking off into the desert, blind both in his vision sense and in a physical one. He has lost what makes him special and different, and he is now just going off to let whatever happens happens in the best probably political play he could manage. And that's where the pity comes in. Paul is someone who fought so hard to try and achieve something different than the end result, but his legacy will forever be what Dune Messiah is painting the portrait of. Paul thought his perfect vision would provide him a righteous future, and instead it has ensnared him in a trap that has resulted in him having no future. If that isn't a beautiful execution of literary irony, I do not know what is. Stars bathed in blood, entire civilizations and histories lost, resentment and new rivalries are going to plague the future of this universe forever, and he just must walk away from it because it's the only way he can establish some form of stabilization. And good God, is that not the appropriate ending to Paul's story? So I like Dune Messiah, because it's making me as a reader be challenged emotionally and on character judgment ways, where Frank Herbert is doing something especially thematically that I have not seen before. And because of that, Paul is being held in a very different position in my mind. But at the same time, uh, I did not have one fist pumping, jump out of the chair moment here. It was just a exercise in sadness. This is one of the saddest stories I have read and I did not expect that. The reason I really don't like my job is I have to continue the Dune series. If I did not have to, I would not read Beyond Dune Messiah because this is the exact note I personally want this story to end on. And it makes me get the fervor for Dune. It really does. Like I now appreciate this book structurally that feels like it should have just been the falling action of Dune, but then you really couldn't have gotten into the nuance and the really deep exercising of consequence that Messiah gets into. So I understand why it's pulled out and turned to this whole other thing, but that's gonna turn off a lot of readers. But those are just my walking around my old college after finishing Dune Messiah thoughts. And I'd love to know yours in the comments down below. And what should I expect with the next entry in the Dune series? Have a good one, y'all. Peace. And of course, I'd like to record a special shout out to my latest high tier patrons, Maddie Whitehead, Olivia, Aaron Pickerin, Rumblebee, and Valifor9. Thank you so much.